So last time you saw that we got the engine going in this and I took the plastics off because this next one is going to be kind of interesting. You're going to be able to get into more trouble, right? We're going to help you get out of it. Hey everyone, it's Josh with Motorcycle and Power Sports News. And last week we got this thing up and running again and it sounds really good. Now that we're back to making the amount of power that we're supposed to, I am sure that we're gonna get into more trouble than we're supposed to. That being said, this week, we're gonna go ahead and install the winch from Bronco on this. That way, well, you know, you just don't lift one of these things out of some place. This has all the electrics that we're gonna need with it, so we're gonna go through it step by step. Make sure that you can install one of these yourself. That being said, let's get started. First off, we're gonna take a look at what all comes in the box here. Now, one of the really cool things about this is, here's the solenoid. They color-coded these to match up with the wires that they included. To me, that is a really nice touch that makes the installation a lot easier and a lot smoother and makes it so you don't install anything backwards, which is always a possibility. The way this goes from out to in is literally just reversing the polarity. So that way, the switch that they supply says out and in on it, you can make sure that it's gonna go the right direction. Now, this is a sealed connector here that screws right into that solenoid setup. Another really nice touch with that. They also include a ton of rubber boots to go over top of the wiring to make sure that you don't end up going sparky. And as I said, all the wires are color coded in this. On top of that, they've also included the hook for the end of the winch and a strap for that. Now, I always love it when I see a strap like this on the end of a winch because this gets your hand out of the way so that way there's no chance of you losing fingers by getting them pinched in the winch. You just hold on to this strap as it wheels back in and you're gonna stay safe that way. This does include a roller fair lead and a bracket for it, but this actually came from the factory with the mounting there. That being said, we won't be able to use the roller fair lead, but we're still gonna get really good use out of the winch. There is the bracket here, and on top of that, while we're in there, we're gonna put on new battery terminals from Bronco. This will make sure that we've got a good connection for the winch and a good connection for all the other electrics on the four-wheeler. That being said, Let's dig in. First up, we want to find a place to mount the solenoid. Now, like I said, the solenoid's color-coded with this. The wires that are blue and yellow are the ones that go to the winch. They're actually a little bit shorter. There's a shorter run there, so we're gonna probably mount them here. There's this bracket set up here. A couple of bolts that will run through there. Nice short run right up to the winch right there. From here, the long black and red wires are the ones that are actually gonna go back to the battery that are gonna power everything. So those will run along the frame from there. But first step, we'll get this mounted up, then we'll get it plugged into the handlebar controls. The next piece to this, we need to have a way to control the winch so that way it doesn't run away with us. Out, in, pretty simple switch. It's gonna mount to the handlebar and this is meant to hang underneath the handlebar so that way you can just hit it with your thumb. There are, nicely, there's two screws here that help it clamp down on the handlebar. The bottom one helps it adjust so that way you can put it as close to or as far away from where your thumb is as you need it. From there, we're gonna run this cable down the handlebars. I'm gonna see if I can snake it through here, out the bottom. Once we get all that done, we're going to attach this to the solenoid. That way we've got a way to control it. This is one of those areas where I'm always gonna tell you to spend a little bit of extra time. That way, it's gonna look that much cleaner, and on top of that, you can make sure that you aren't gonna have any issues with the installation on down the road. If you do it too hastily, sometimes you can end up with this catching on something else or whatever. They give enough extra wire here for, on the control side of things that if you need to mount this somewhere that's a little bit different, you can. 
Obviously this is a universal fit for this ATV. Everything's really close. A lot of people will just zip tie this and put it someplace. To me, I always like to run electrician's tape around it. it gives you a little bit better, tighter holding on this and doesn't make it so it's gonna abrade as bad or as easily on that. But all we have to do is tape this up, hook that, and then find a secure spot to put this. So now that we've got the solenoid there and the controller hooked up to that, we need to put the yellow and the blue wires on, and those are what's gonna run up to the winch. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run them kinda loose for now because I wanna get the routing figured out. We wanna keep them away from sharp edges. We also wanna make sure that we keep it away from places where like the rack of the fenders are gonna sit. So we'll probably run it under here, under this one, and along this support here, and that way we can feed the wires in through the back of the mount for the winch. We'll put a little bit of extra wire through there, we'll attach it to the winch, then we'll push the winch back in. Then we will tidy up how they're routed, make sure we got them locked down in the right spots. With these terminals, the two things that you're gonna wanna look at, one side is usually raised or flatter. I typically put that down, gives you a little bit better clearance with stuff. As you do this and slide this through here, make sure you get these boots on here to help protect and help make sure that we don't end up with any arcing issues. So we're getting ready to put the winch in. Now there's a couple of things that you wanna have ready. First off, make sure you've got your nuts ready for the wires here. Second off, make sure you've got the hardware ready for the back. Now Bronco includes a number of different length bolts because you may have a number of different length mounting brackets with that. This one's actually gonna take the short one because we just have to go through this piece of plate and then into the winch here. Now one of the really cool things about this, this is a 3,000 pound winch, it's stamped as such there. Also, you have the option to have this locked or free spooling on this. This is a great option when it comes to winches for it to be able to free spool. If it's locked and it doesn't free spool, you have to let the winch out via the motor. It takes a while. If you go to free spool, you can pull the rope out pretty much as fast as you can pull on it. So that's a really nice feature that Bronco has on these. So let's go ahead and get the winch in, start her to hook it up. Remember. We are color-coded, so yellow, blue. So I've got the winch set in here now. We've got to pull the bolts in through here in order to make everything locked down and ready to go. Now, like I said, it uses the small bolt. Make sure you go lock washer, washer, bolt. The other thing I always suggest doing with these, just go finger tight with any of these so that way you can wiggle it around a little bit in there. The nuts that are inside of the winch are a little bit loose so that way you've got some room to move and room to play with it. In order to make the installation easier, Bronco sent us these battery terminal adapters. The really nice thing about these is in so many cases, if you've got accessories for the battery, you end up with trying to put one bolt through three or four different ring terminals always ends up you're trying to fight those wires, everything like that. With this, you've actually got four different spots on here to screw in four different things. So this will just go on top of the battery. We're gonna put the battery terminal to this, screw it all together, and we'll have a place for our other wire for the winch to hook right up to. In this, it is time to run the cables. Now the first thing, they send these cables coiled up. So make sure you spend a minute just run your hand over it each direction, straighten things back out. Makes it a whole lot easier to deal with. Now our goal is to get from there back to here. I look ahead of time to see where I'm gonna route things. So I look and I see inside of here is a good place. This frame piece here would be great to keep it under. 
and we can even have a spot where we can zip tie it here to keep it up and out of the way so it's not gonna drag on anything sharp. Something else I wanna be aware of though is when we get up here, we're gonna wanna make sure that we stay away from the shifter and we're probably just gonna wanna come up here and over to the top here. I, what I worry about is I look for sharp edges. I wanna make sure that there's no place where the cable's gonna get cut. I don't want it to get frayed because obviously we don't want big sparks. That's usually a bad thing to have, but keep track of that and make sure you run as straight of a run as you can from there back to the battery. When we go to hook it up, we are gonna hook it up as the positive first and then the negative. That way we make sure once again, we're not getting any sparks. Rolling. We've got all the wires back here now. So what we're gonna end up doing is there's actually a spot for the other wires to pass through on this, but it's not open. So handy dandy pocket knife, we will So the last step that we need to do before we get this thing going is the solenoid has the capability to be set up so that way it will only be active when the key is on. Which is a really good thing actually because you don't want some kid hopping on your four-wheeler in the garage and playing with the winch without the key in it. Um, there's all sorts of great reasons to make it so the winch will only work when the ignition is on. The other reason too is obviously you don't want it to drain your battery some other time if a switch gets stuck. So we just have a regular old test light here is all you need. A volt ohm meter will do the same thing. We just need a source that will kick on when you've got 12 volts. Now the nice thing about this is too is it doesn't really require hardly any amperage at all. So it's not like we need something that's got 5, 8, 10, 20 amps. We just need something that literally be a 12 volt signal wire. So I've got a good ground because we know we can light up with that. So we know we've got a good ground. There's this is known to be typically a pigtail that is only live when the ignition is on. Polaris has this set up here and let's see. Yep, we got a live one. So Bronco's included the wire that goes from here to this. We're gonna hook that up and then we're gonna make sure our winch works. If you notice, they include on both ends here, these uh, green rubber pieces. Look, these are meant to go essentially not underwater, but at some point there's a good chance it may be. So do whatever you can to make sure that stuff is gonna stay dry, especially connections like this. If you need a winch, well, there's a pretty good chance that yeah, you may have gotten a little too deep into something. So we've got one more thing to get to before we uh, test this thing out. And in that, it's kind of tough to get to right here. That being said, remember that free spooling option that I talked about? Just turn that drum there. Now we can pull this right out. That being said, it's gonna make it a lot easier to put the hook on. Maybe. Pin goes through, and then it is a simple bend over cotter key that goes in lastly. Make sure the ears are folded over on it so that way it doesn't come out. Next up, I think we need to test this thing, don't you?
Not the fastest, but it's definitely get you, gonna get you out of a bind if you need it to. I'd say that this is a success. With that being a 3,000 pound winch, I'm pretty sure that we could pull anything that we wanted to around here. What, what do we got going on next week? Stay tuned to find out. I'll see you guys out on the trail. <laughs>